Cross tabulation is one way that we can start to look at the relationship between two variables. So cross tabulation or cross tabs, that's one way of starting to see if there's relationships between two variables. So essentially what a cross tab does is it displays the distribution of one variable for each category of the other variable. So this allows us to basically control one or more, but we'll just start with one variable while looking at the association between other variables or between different levels. So this is best to use when variables are nominal or ordinal. It doesn't really work for interval or ratio level variables because you need the categories to then look um, and put them in like a table. So this is sort of one type of bivariate measure where we are looking at two variables that are um, that are either nominal or ordinal, so they're discrete level variables, and we, we pl are plotting them in a table to sort of see how the two variables are related. So here's an example of a cross tab. So we have um, the recorded level of crime in the community, which means that's the actual level of crime in a community, and the level of crime that's estimated by the local officers, the local police officers. So this would be our independent variable because the level of crime just is what it is. It's not going to be affected by what the police think it is, um, at least not sort of in the way this was designed. And so the level of crime in the community then is the independent variable and the level of crime estimated by the local officer is the dependent variable. So essentially the, it's, we're, this would be testing to see if there is a relationship between the level of crime that exists in a community and then how that's estimated by the officer. So we think that this is that the level of crime is going to affect the police officer's estimation or perception of crime in the area, which makes sense. So we would look at this and we can see, so there's three levels of both of these variables. So low, medium, and high for both. So what's the level of crime in the community? It's either low, medium, or high. And what's the perceived level of crime in the area by the officer? It's in low, medium, or high. So we can look at each of these individual cells and the cells are where one level meets up with another level. So we can see when crime is low in a community, then there were seven officers that also perceived crime to be low in a low crime area. We can look at another cell in a high crime area, there was one officer that perceived it as low level of crime. And you know when the crime is considered medium level, you have two officers that are that do perceive it as medium. You have two officers that perceive it as high. So we can look at sort of those individual level cells, but then we can also kind of sort of see what's going on a little bit more by looking at like rows at a, one row at a time. So we can look at this row. So this would include all of the low level crime communities. So communities that have low levels of crime would be across this row. And so we would say, well, seven officers said it was low crime seven said it was medium and one person said it was a high crime area even though it's a low crime area and so then we can use the row marginals which is what these are and it's basically it would be the when we add up across each row so there's seven seven one is 15 two and two is four so that means that there's 15 low crime areas four medium crime areas and eight high crime areas and that's totally not taking into account anything about the, the estimation. It's just about what is how many low crime areas, how many medium crime areas are there, and how many high crime areas are there. And then we can look at these column marginals, and this tells us this adds up this way instead. So, you know, how many officers perceived low crimes? So there were eight officers that perceived crime to be low in their area, 13 that perceived crime to be medium level, and six that perceived it to be high crime areas. So, this is, we can look at this and we can see a lot going on. So right off the bat, we can see that it, there does seem to be an effect. It seems to be that those in low crime areas are tend to be kind of estimating it as lower. Those in high crime areas tend to be estimating it as higher, but it is not perfect. We have people who are not, um, you know, we have this one guy who thinks it's high crime when it's actually really low crime. And this one person who thinks it's really low crime when it's actually a high crime area. So. Um, it's not perfect. If it was a perfect association, then you would only have numbers in this diagonal because all the low crime areas would be perceived as low, all the medium crime areas would be perceived as medium, and all the high crime areas would be perceived as high. And all these other cells would be empty, would have zero. So, um, so this, this would be 15, this would be 4, and this would be 8, and all these other ones would be zero. That would be if it was a perfect association, which we know it isn't. 
but there are some things that we can say about the association and that's sort of what you want to do next is describe that association and so the first question when you want to describe the association between two variables when we're looking at cross tabs is does it exist is there an association so this is basically asking if the percentage distributions are varying at all between the categories because again if it was a perfect association it would be go back this it would be all in this diagonal right so that means that there would be this would be 15 and these would be zero that is the maximum variation that you can have uh, versus you know there's if if it was if these were all the exact same number or as close as possible to the exact same number that would mean that there is no relationship because they are all sort of distributed evenly and so if the percentage distributions are about the same in all the levels, that means that there's not an effect. There's no effect happening between the two variables because it doesn't matter what level you're at, it's the, the, the likelihood of each one of them is the same. Versus if it was like, uh, if there's a, some kind of distribution vari variation that's happening where it looks like um, there's more in some categories than others, which we saw in that example, then yeah, there does seem to be an association here. Now, there are measures that we can use that actually give us numbers to tell us whether there exists an association or not, but you don't have to just eyeball it, but you can sometimes just eyeball it and know that there's something going on there. So the next question is, well, how strong is that association? How much do they vary? And this goes back to the, to the if we had, you know, the 15 versus 0, 0, that is the maximum variation. That would be a very strong association. In fact, it would be a perfect association if we had that all along that diagonal. But maybe um, it's, you know, there's there's more in some, which is actually what we definitely see. We see there's more in like these two categories compared to that category. There's more in these two categories, the medium and high perception in the high crime areas. So there is variation there and there is we see that it's, you know, there's higher here than over here. And so it can tell us that this is not a perfect association but it'd be like fairly strong maybe like mid-range kind of strong but again there we do have numbers that'll tell us exactly how strong these relationships are and then the direction so the direction tells us um, for, first of all your variables have to have direction which the example we have there is a direction there's low medium high that is a direction as an ordinal level variable if you have nominal level variables you can't talk about direction but if you have ordinal level variables uh, you can say with that, that um, you know, are the values on the dependent variable, do they increase or decrease with an increase in the value of our independent variable? We can go back and we can look at this. And so associations are either positive or negative. And we can go back and look at this and say, well, yes, I mean, there does seem to be that as um, the level of crime in the community goes up, the perceived or estimated level of crime goes up by the officer. Again, not perfectly, but that tends to be the association we see which would mean this is a positive association. As crime goes up, the perceived amount of crime goes up. And that works the same way as crime goes down, the perceived level of crime goes down. That is the same relationship. Both of those are positive relationships. This would be a negative relationship if for some reason, um, the high levels of crime in the community equated to officers estimating there to be low levels and when you had low crime areas it was estimated as really high if it was for some reason that opposite effect that would be a negative association but as we see the case here is clearly a positive association and so the last thing that you can sort of look at when you're talking about association is looking at see if there's any patterns so are the changes in the de in the in the uh, dependent variable are they fairly regular just increasing or decreasing which seems to be the case in the one we were looking at but or maybe they can vary in some way so there might be like a gradual increase then a rapid increase and that's sometimes hard to see in a cross tabs you you would probably need to have more levels than three uh, for each variable in a cross tab to really see any patterns um, but like if it, it could be possible for example if we had um, you know, and these numbers were pretty similar. And then for some, and then, you know, for the high crime, you know, all of the officers knew that it was a high crime area. That might be a pattern because it's like, well, I mean, they're, they're a little bit off sometimes if it's a lower medium crime area, but if it's a high crime area, no, they all knew it was a high crime area. If all eight of our guy, of our police officers fell in this cell, 
Um, I mean, that's not the case, but if that if that had been what showed in our cross tab, we, that might be a pattern that we would want to look more into. But sometimes that's hard to tell just looking at a cross tab, but sometimes if it's there, you're going to see it. So there are some ways I sort of alluded to the fact that there are some numbers we can use. And um, so there are numbers in terms of measuring the association. So because we're talking about uh, discrete level variables, they have their own measures of association. So this does not, this, these would not be what you would use for interval or ratio level variables when you're, when you're comparing, when you're doing some bivariate analyses. But if you have two ordinal or nominal level variables, you would use either gamma or lambda. So gamma, you would have to have ordinal level variables because it gives you the direction of relationship. And again, if you have or if you ha only have nominal level variables, you don't have direction. So you wouldn't be able to use gamma. So gamma basically is a measure that and it's something that you can you would use in like SPSS or some other statistical software. And it would it would um, you don't have to know how to calculate gamma or lambda, uh, but it would basically spit out a number that is going to range from a negative one to a positive one with a zero in the middle, meaning that there is no relationship at all. And so a negative one means it's a perfect negative association. So it would be perfectly that as one goes up, the other goes down. And so it would be that diagonal, but instead of being this diagonal, it would be that diagonal on the cross tabs. Um, but <clears throat> it would be a, neg a perfect negative association. Zero means there is nothing going on. There's absolutely no relationship between the two variables. And a positive one would be a perfect positive association, meaning that as one goes up, the other goes up, and, and it's perfect. So perfect associations are very, very, very rare. Uh, so typically you see uh, some something sort of like a, um, like a negative 0.7 or a positive 0.85 or something like that. And that would tell you like a, a 0.85 is a really strong positive association. And so that's, a, that's a, a fairly useful measure to use to talk about what's going on with your variables. If you only have nominal level variables, or for some reason you don't care about direction, which would be weird if you have ordinal level variables, but if you only want to know about the strength of the relationship, which is what you would do if you had only nominal variables, then you would use lambda. And it works the same way, except it only tells you strength. So it doesn't have negative or positive, it just goes from zero to one. And a zero would be no association, and a one would be a perfect association, but there's no, there's no direction. And so again, it's going to be like a 0.67 or something or whatever. And that tells you how strong that relationship is, but it doesn't give you direction because there is no direction, or at least no direction that makes sense. So that would be sort of one way we can use numbers to describe the association. And then we can also use inferential statistics. And so this was sort of um, has been alluded to in some of the previous videos, but the inferential statistics are essentially saying is there a statistically significant difference? And so we're looking if they, it, to see if the association exists in the population that the sample was drawn from. So we're trying to now infer that what we see, so we're looking at you know, measures of gamma and lambda and seeing if there's, you know, what that association is, but is that a big enough or sort of difference for it to be something real from this population that we drew our sample from. And that's really what we are more interested in knowing about. We don't, we, we don't, we care about our sample, but if we only know about our sample and we can't apply that to anything beyond our sample, it's not really helpful. So inferential statistics tell us basically, is the, the, the that strength of that relationship, is that a strong enough relationship and does it happen, um, you know, is it big enough and farther enough from zero, given like things like the sample size and um, what, how many levels of the variable there are and things like that. Uh, so it takes all that into account and it says, is the difference from zero big enough to be real? And so chi-square is the most popular test for um, cross tabs and it would basically say, uh, so yes, yes or no. There, and it really gives you, because if you get statistical significance, if it's your p-value is less than 0.05, it means that yes, it's big enough difference from zero for it to be real. If it's a big p-value, then it means that this is really likely. It could super, it could happen just by chance. And so it's not something real, or at least there's not enough information to say there's something real. So that's kind of how inferential statistics work. Um, and, and you would basically use chi-square to say, is this, is this gamma value or lambda value, is this big enough 
to be mean that this is a real relationship in the population that we drew our sample from.